In this clip, I will explain the principles of creating narrated lecture slides with annotations. We need lecture slides, the OneNote software or something similar, a tablet input device and a screen capture software. So here are my lecture slides. In this case, they're a PDF file, but they could also be a PowerPoint file or anything similar. The next element we need is the OneNote software. Of course, there may be similar softwares. This is the one I use. Now, OneNote looks a little bit unfamiliar. You have these sort of notebooks. They're like folders. And then in these folders or notebooks are different pages. And this is a piece of software meant to keep handwritten notes, for instance. So what I'm going to do is I just create a page here. To demonstrate that, you see it creates this notebook page. and I don't like these lines, so I'm going to take away these lines. Well, it's just an aesthetic thing. Now we need to get the lecture slides into this software. And that's very easy. In, a, in the case of OneNote, you uh, go to insert, uh, to the insert tab, and here you insert either a file or a printout. Doesn't matter which option you choose. So I choose file here. Now I find my slides. Um, there are, of course, already uh, uh, on the desktop demo slides here. They are. Now I have the choice. I want to insert them as a printout. And what's happening now is that basically OneNote is sort of printing these slides into that document. So that's brilliant. And in here we will soon create extra annotations. But we have our slides, our base capital which you may very well have already prepared. And now you're wondering how you do that as sort of online recorded lectures. You can screen however much you want. I always like to keep a little bit of white space uh, to the right of the slides because I, I want to keep extra notes here. And I also like to create a bit more space between slides. Unfortunately, I'm not aware of any default settings that gives more space. So you have to use this little divider function and just drag that out and create a little bit of extra white space. And you do that with all your slides. Unfortunately, that's a little bit of manual work. If you don't worry about showing the next slide um, while you're talking about one, that that's all fine. You don't need to do that then anymore. So. Now the next step, how do we add handwritten annotations? I will show two ways. Here in this particular case, I have a um, tablet computer, okay, where the, the screen, you can write on the screen. So if you're lucky enough to have one of those, you can just take your pen and uh, then start writing and annotating on the screen. Of course, if you want to record that, you would have to start your screen recording software before you do that, and you would now be recording what you do and what you say. And you can just highlight things on the slide, uh, leave extra notes on the right hand side, and you scroll through your presentation as you go here and just do what you would perhaps do on a visualizer in a, in a lecture theater and just add your personal additional information to these slides. This is what makes these slides worth much more than just the printed version. The second way how you can add your annotations is if you don't have a tablet computer, uh, you may have such a tablet input device. I'm actually not quite sure what the technical term is. Uh, they start from around 50 pounds. Uh, at this moment in time, this is an older version, but still perfectly uh, functioning. So that's just like a big mouse pad with a pen. But otherwise, it works exactly the same. In this particular case, you can see you, you have to look at the screen and write on the tablet device. Uh, you need to get used to this a little bit, but it doesn't take very long to get used to this. And uh, you can get pretty OK handwriting going here. Otherwise, it works exactly the same. You scroll through your, through your slides here and add your annotations. Again, if you have started your screen recorder before and record it with your additional verbal narration, you can do that at that stage. With a tablet input device, be it a tablet computer or the tool which I used in the second part, a tablet input device, you can produce something that is very close to what you could deliver in a classroom. You could even do it live 
if you have students in a Zoom meeting or in a Blackboard Collaborate meeting, you could then respond with your handwriting to questions from the students. I usually record the lectures by myself without direct student input. When I do this, I actually prefer to first merely record the visuals, what you've seen in the clip and you, you saw me not talking while I was recording because I like to concentrate on just the visuals. Then afterwards I add a narration, often after speeding up the clip, especially if I use a lot of handwriting because that tends to be slow. To do that, you also need a video editor. There are free versions available, but a software like Camtasia incorporates a screen recording and a video editing uh, software at the same time. That makes it just um, a bit more productive and nicer. In any case, the only real hardware which you need here is the tablet input device. And as I said, you can get the uh, these tablet input devices for prices around 50 pounds now.